welcome to the Christ Works podcast. Uh, today I've got Brian Sheenan with me, who uh, goes under the name. Uh, Let- okay, man, you're gonna have to help me with that. No, I want to try it, man. Uh-huh. Uh, let right, I, I've literally got it in front of me. Let Ledger Demain. It's Demain. pretty close. Uh, Leisure Demain. Leisure Demain. What's what does that come from? Um, it was a word that I kind of fell in love with like four or five years ago when I kind of like when I started kind of pushing the art and didn't want to. Um, much like having a band name, I didn't want to just do it under Brian Sheen. I kind of needed like a brand to kind of come up with and, uh, kind of fell in love with the name and it, uh, it means like sleight of hand, oh, like, okay. uh, an expert at like conjuring tricks or, you know, work with your hands and stuff like that and deceit and Is it French? kind of resonated a lot with like the mask work and everything and, uh, not to mention the sleight of hand stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so like, yeah, I mean, that's you mentioned the masks just there. I mean, that's one of the main things I wanted to talk to you about was like your work is very like, um, very, well, I don't want to say arts and crafts, right? I'm trying to find a better word. It's like very, like, uh, everything is very like, uh, built from the ground up. There's, you know, although you're doing a lot of photo manipulation and stuff, like a lot of what you're manipulating is really there. Um, so like what, how did you end up like, um, how much do you, do you value, uh, the, the actual sort of costume design part of your work? Um, it, I mean, that is, that's like the base. So that's where it all kind of starts. And, um, uh, um, without going on too much of a tangent about it, it all started like doing, um, like haunted house work and like theater work. So okay. I would have to make make things for, you know, the characters that you're portraying in those roles. And then um, lots and lots of help from, like, more adept friends that knew how to make stuff better than I did and still do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you actually used to work in a haunted house? I still kind of do. Not as much really? as I used to, yeah. Um, All right. So, so like, it's like, a, like, a, like, you actually have, like, a sort of background in prop design, basically. Yeah, a little bit. Again, a lot of it was like I could not have made stuff without like the help of like people that knew a lot more about it. Mm. Um, but that's like, that's how I think this whole notion of like that you know like uh, like an artist or this whole like self-made idea is is such bullshit because yeah. you know everyone is uh, um, you know uh, a sort of like culmination of their whole life experiences, you know. And you, the idea that an artist should be like this sort of insular person just creating art that's purely coming out of their own head. It's right out of the womb, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't work like that. No, it's, uh, I've never been one to hide my influences. Um, and I don't know, I think it's just, we're all just like a product of our surroundings and stuff. So it's always, I've always surrounded myself with the things that I'm into and it's kind of like rubbed off on what I've been doing and what I've been making. Mm. um but yeah that's kind of like where the mass stuff started and then it was just kind of it just felt natural to want to make art outside of that performing aspect with it and um haven't gotten to do too much of it lately just because of uh materials and like other commissions and projects that i've been having to catch up on but um yeah it's it's a huge piece it's not like the focus it's the art just kind of becomes a uh uh, like with the photography, with the photo manipulation, prop making, costume making, all that kind of stuff. It just kind of a way of trying to make something that encompasses all my interests. Mm. If well, at least as many as I can. But yeah, you know. yeah. Though that's that's another thing that I was interested in is that you on your website, for example, you do actually have um, your sort of different mediums delineated separately. Right. And, yeah. And um, but then. Uh, even though some of the mediums are actually quite uh, aesthetically different, like they have a different sort of texture to them and, and the way that they're presented is still obviously it all has the same atmosphere because it's obviously all coming from you. But cool. um, how, how do you, is it, is it purely like a functionality thing that you divide things up in that way or, or how, how do you divide it in your mind? Um. Well, as far like the reasoning for doing something like that is just it. Uh, I like to think I'm very organized, and just having a 
a big gallery when you go to the site and just has all these kind of things on it would just kind of um it would drive me crazy like if i was trying to find something or mm. uh separating it into like something like that though where it has like the different like you said categories if somebody's coming to me and wants to commission me for a piece or do something it's a lot easier to kind of like oh okay well here's like that stuff separated into a separate category and vice mm. versa. Also, I just kind of feel like there's like different things. Like it doesn't, um, it's like even like yourself, like being visual and being like doing audio and music and stuff. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's all the same, but it's not, if it makes sense. Mm. It's like, it's important to show that it's like all these different things that kind of come together. Like, the uh the photo manipulation the stuff that's just under like the ledger main tag is like the stuff that it's like the digital painting the collage the painting and all that kind of stuff whereas like there's just photography which i feel like doesn't fit in that category and then mm. like the album art and it's like it's all the same like there's a lot of cross chatter and stuff but it's uh yeah i don't know i don't know if that answers the question really but it's, uh, <laughs> i feel like it's a lot of stuff i'm actually adding like uh, uh i had a commercial job for almost four years that because of the virus i was furloughed and then you know let go um but i have basically just four years of like t-shirt designs that was for like commercial retailers and stuff that i've never really shared i don't i've never really shared that work on mm. uh the ledger yeah because it was your I, job right yeah, yeah i just it, it's all, plus it's a lot of it's kind of uh using assets that those companies would provide so it's kind of weird to be like hey this was this thing i made but it was using mm. you know this photo or like this piece yeah. of art and then i like, had to make new stuff with and and now like finally getting into the uh um finally getting in a position where i'm recording audio instead of just you know getting high and fucking around with sounds and swelling noises and shit for hours mm -hmm. and hours like actually recording it and trying to apply it for something so there's going to be even more tabs added to that is what I'm saying now. So. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's that, I think, um, it, I think it is also quite an old notion for artists to be like, have a, a very uh, singular output, like, you know, to be like, I'm a painter or I'm a sculptor. Like, you yeah. know, it's, it's pretty rare these days that, that like people um, only do one thing. And like for me personally, like I couldn't bear to only have to do one thing because like uh, we, I was, we were having like a group discussion with uh, my wife's family the other day, and um, we were talking about how nurseries uh, are laid out these days. So they have like stations with different activities, and the idea is that the children can freely roam around the different stations like as they feel. Yeah, they choose on their own. Yeah. certain things, and like. So during this sort of quarantine now, my wife works uh, in the kitchen or the living room, and then I have the, the office. And the office has actually kind of mutated into this like nursery for me, where like each different surface has like a different like activity. So I have like my sort of like sculptor, sculpture, like mask desk over there. Then here is like my like painting and drawing desk. And then I have the, you know, the music stuff all here as well and then yeah so and i just kind of like spin around them you know uh, like yeah so for uh, you like how is it that you kind of like divide up your work um it sounds like uh i'm in a similar situation where it's kind of uh the studio space is kind of uh, a little bit of everything right now um it's um I've always wanted to have like an own space, like with the band, uh, fell ruin. We have like a practice space that we rent and I would definitely benefit from having just like an artist space, like renting a space, but realistically it's just not financially in the budget for things. Yeah. Um, but because of this whole current, you know, situation, fantastic looking dog. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this is Greta. She's oh, awesome. uh, a little nugget, <laughs> but yeah, just ignore her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But now the, uh, uh, but because of the no, current so situation, it's like really good flat, and really right. appreciative just to have a space to be able to work at home and just kind of like wake up and just go into another room and do the thing. Mm. Um, it's weird. Um, I know you're a tattoo artist, but obviously like nobody's like going to their day job. Did you have like, um, when it happened, my, I was immediately like, you know, when I was originally like laid off from the day job was kind of like, 
oh, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to finally have all this time and like get caught up on projects. And I still find myself like completing the amount that I was when I still had that job. Yeah. I don't really feel there's necessarily like an increase in productivity as far as things that I said I was going to do. And I mean, it, I feel like um, maybe I'm still doing the same amount of things per day, but I'm doing, I'm, I'm uh, getting a chance to do all the actual things that I haven't done that I wanted to do. So like, because like, it's like, it's been in my mind for ages. I'm like, I want to make a YouTube channel and do podcasts. That's like something I've wanted to do for like, like a year probably. But because of constantly trying to be like, oh, like I've got to do all these tattoo designs for all these tattoos. And then also then like, you know, all the music shit as well. I've not been able to like dedicate a full day to actually setting shit up. Cause it's like, you know, like when you first set something up and create the mechanism for doing it, that right. takes fucking ages. And you, and you, cause you know that that's a huge job, you kind of put it off and, and then it's like, you know, and then, your more standard work kind of fills in and you go and you just never get a chance so i feel like I, I yeah like i feel like i'm basically doing the same amount of stuff per day but it's giving me the chance to actually like be like well i could completely not do tattoo stuff today you know because i i know that for the foreseeable future i'm not going to be doing it so it's okay right uh, why do you for yeah. you if you're not if you're not being more productive why do you think that is well, it's actually, I think it's, after you said all that, it's probably more in line with that because it's like, now I've been focusing on, um, like you said, the things that you've wanted to do, but kind of mm -hmm. like put off because not really because you've been intimidated by it, but just because of that, that learning curve can be discouraging, especially when you have a bunch of other projects that yeah. you can work on. When you stuff. know so you've only like, got so many hours to do it in, and then you know that like for at least half of that, you're just going to be like shit and like not doing anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, definitely with, uh, it, it was like that with, uh, I've been filming with the photo shoots that I do. I've been like shooting video over the last year, like just doing like little quick kind of video blurbs in between there and not much different besides like just the actions that they're doing in the photos anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just instead of just doing photos, I'm just switching it to camera. Um, yeah. So it's just kind of really just mundane kind of like figurative work but it's the moving picture yeah yeah and has, i've wanted it has a very yeah. different atmosphere to it though when it's yeah moving. um and i've um so i've been filming but it's the editing process and putting it all together where yeah. i realize like the art form with video and all that stuff kind of comes together yeah and uh i've always just kind of put it off like i've done video stuff but i've always like the editing i've always just kind of like had somebody else that knew it better mm. and i was more confident in them doing it kind of yeah. put things together where it was like the music videos or anything like that. But now it's, um, because like I'm realizing that the editing is the art form. It's just yeah. to be able to do that and push that off onto somebody else. It's like, well, it was kind of like, not to say like I was disappointed. It's like, I never released anything that was disappointed in, but it's, uh, it's a lot nicer to have that control and uh you know, yeah well it's like totally the yours then and... yeah yeah well it's like you you're giving away a certain level of ownership when you outsource like that right and yeah i i, I totally because um when i made the music video for terminal uniqueness i uh, basically at the time i was like i do not have time to edit this uh because I, I i like I've, I've done music video stuff before like when i was at university and stuff so like i know how to do it but i was like i know how long it takes so like i'm under no illusions of like you know when you first start doing something and you reckon oh, i'll probably take this long and then yeah so i was under no illusions of how long it takes and i was like i do not have time considering the amount of tattoo stuff i've got to do so i i got um a, a really great director i know i knew to to do it with me and he was really really great in terms of like trying like um really hard to have me being as involved as possible in in it and he really wanted me to be he was like no i want you to be the director and i'm going to be the editor kind of thing and even though when i first came to him i was like i really like all your stuff and i know you'll do a good job so you can basically do whatever you want and he was like no no i want you to be really creatively involved in it but then when i did it and i was like i did yeah have that feeling of like ah oh, fuck if i just like 
done it myself, I didn't, not even necessarily that I thought I would, would have done better or, or even would have been more, um, or even that it would have been different, just that it's like, yeah, I was handing over some sort of ownership of it that I would be more satisfied in general with the work if I had done everything, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's part of like, just in general, like when people come to us and want to commission artwork and stuff and it's, they're putting their ideas and hopefully the ideas are minimal. They're not too overbearing with stuff, mm. but it's, uh, it's kind of like a, uh, it, it's opened my eyes to like what that's like. I mean, not like, not that I haven't like commissioned other people to do things, but especially when you're doing art and like you're going to somebody else to kind of, you know, edit the video. Um, we have a good friend here. He does like a lot of uh, music videos uh, named Nick, Nick Holland. I think he's still working under the uh, Diamond Dead Media. Um, Diamond, Diamond Dead Head. Media. What's that? Did you say Diamond Head? Uh, Di uh, Diamond Dead. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I think uh, they actually he actually did a music video from a band from the UK called Geist. I don't know if you're familiar. Yeah, with I know them. them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think like uh, he did some like cinematic stuff here in Michigan, and then like they had somebody film, um, film them playing live or something. Anyway, I'm getting uh, off the yeah. off the track, but yeah, they, uh, you know, he's somebody that like I knew that he's really good at editing, and he could make a surreal concept that I would have for a video and just kind of make it seem like a tangible story. Mm. So it's, but now it's just kind of, um, um, I just always wanted to do that. And now that I'm yeah. in a position where I have the time to do it, it's kind of doing, it's the same thing with, uh, finally like recording audio and recording the audio ideas and stuff like that, as opposed to just kind of talking about it and putting it off and things like that. So, but yeah, yeah. it's like, I've always dreamed, you know, you always like when you're kind of like a, you know, like professional creative, you always kind of have these, uh, and it's weird, like being like a professional creative person is, is really strange because that like the mechanism of, of having a job, like, like, for example, with tattooing is like a really uh, crystallized version of that. Cause it is very like, you go to the shop, you do your job, that it's like a creative thing, but it's your job. And then, you know, you get paid at the end of the day and then you go home and that's it. And it's like, you, I always dream of having these like, oh man, I could like, I could like rent a cottage out in the country and like, and just go there for like a month and like, like, you know, not take a phone or anything. And I could just completely isolate myself and just purely do like, like, you know, creative work. And you always sort of dream, like, or I do anyway, like dream about doing that. And then I feel kind of like I'm finally actually getting to do that, you know, like, um, yeah. No, I, I completely agree. The idea of, uh, um, especially now, I don't know if it's like as I get older, but just as I get like more and more ideas of like things, I don't go um, um, back when you could go out and go to things and go to the bar and go to the shows and stuff mm. like that. It's It's never... Uh, the last couple of years, I kind of fell out of the whole, like, feeling the need to go out. Mm. It's like, oh, I could go out or I could stay in and, like, work on this thing that I want to work on. Yeah. And that's always been the appeal. So it's like being forced into a situation now where you have to isolate and you have to stay home and you have to do these things. Um, it is kind of like that. It is kind of nice to be able to like, oh, I, I have no choice but to isolate and create. Yeah. Things. So there's no like, um, there's no like, sort of, you're not being pulled in two directions at all. It's just like complete focus. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's also been nice to, uh, I mean, with the exception of like going to the grocery store every other week and then, um, uh, uh, you know, going out into the woods and taking heights with, uh, the girlfriend and it's, uh, it's kind of nice to kind of just stay home and not have any obligations outside of it. I do miss like going to shows and like seeing friends and things like that, but mm -hmm. it's, um, this isn't too far removed from what I was already doing. Yeah. You know, that's like self isolating yeah. and working on things, you know? So yeah. it's, it's nice. I mean, it's not nice. The situation, the circumstances definitely suck, but yeah. Um, that, that's, that's the thing that when I've been doing these podcasts, the thing that keeps getting said is that like, um, yeah, the, the everyone that I speak to keeps saying like, it's not really that different for me, you know? Yeah. 
like like my tattoo friends it's kind of like the only difference for us is that we're not actually doing the tattoos we're still doing all the same stuff that we'd be doing at home anyway which is tattoo related but right. we're just not doing the actual tattoo and then yeah. like yeah for you yeah we're still just at home doing art and music and yeah the only difference is that there's not the option to go to a gig uh or whatever you know um yeah I, uh, I just saw when you're talking about the video of stuff you've been doing, I just, I just like uh, earlier today watched the, the doc monomer. Um, sort oh, of, cool. Like what, what do you even call it? Is this, I mean, it's kind of like a video podcast, right? Uh, it's, uh, they're calling it a video zine. It's, uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Lee Barto and if I'm pronouncing it right. And then, uh, Gretchen Heinel, uh, they both own a shop that's in, uh, Nyack, New York. Um, called Doc Monomer's uh, Audio Emporium. And it's basically like a record shop slash, like they sell art, they sell shirts, they do shows out of there, they do a lot mm. of things. Um, I was actually supposed to do an art exhibition with some um, like live electronic thing, noise things, um, noise things, <laughs> yeah. uh, back uh, last Saturday, April 18th, but because of the situation, the whole yeah. thing got canceled. Um, but they kind of started this, video you know submission based video zine to kind of like still harbor that artist community mm. and it was a, again it was just another good um a good excuse to get off my ass and start doing the things i wanted to yeah, do yeah yeah it's because you need it's like to, you need a, you need like a goal right it's like you have yeah. these ideas like, yeah, but, like oh i should do something like that but like the thing that tips it from being this like abstract idea to actually like being like, right, I'm going to do this is if you have something to do it for, you know? Right. Yeah. It's, it's a, um, I'm very deadline, uh, deadline orientated. Yeah. Um, as much as I hate them, it kind of puts me into focus and lets me organize as far as what I want to do and having a platform such as that, the monomer TV, um, it's, uh, it definitely keeps you focused and organized and definitely keeps you like doing the thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, that's only the second episode they did. Um, I missed the deadline for the first one. Um, but yeah, the plan for that is just to kind of submit a chapter with every new episode of that. If not every week, you know, trying to do every other week, depending on things. But yeah, are are they doing it weekly? They're uh, as of right now, they're doing it weekly. Yep. Really? Shit. Yep, yeah. It, but it all depends on. Yeah, what was the on, uh, first one yesterday? Yeah, I watched the first one yesterday, and then I'm, uh, I'm halfway through the the second one today. And your 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 thing is like right near the start. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, like I I was kind of imagining because you never ex really explained to me what it was that you you you'd like uh, contributed, but it was like yeah, I was like I, so the music in that did, was that you that made that or what was it? Uh, well, I'll, I'll just say it's sound. Yeah, I made the. Uh... Oh uh, yeah, no, it was. Perfect. Yeah, it's uh, it's like a small really, piece. Yeah. It's a smaller yeah. piece of uh, another thing, and it's uh, just kind of again. It was like making videos and not necessarily wanting the videos to all be music videos mm. for other people and things. Yeah. So it's naturally well, that, that just was kind actually of, one of the things that I really really liked about it was that um, there's a really certain emotional feeling that you get where when the music or the the audio of the video is completely uh disassociated with what you're seeing so there's like a there's one little bit in it that looks like the, the the figure is like kind of screaming but then the audio is like kind of very foreboding but not it's not like a bombastic sound and like that like to me that sort of dissonance and that is like i actually i fucking love that and uh, um, thank you yeah yeah so like that I, and i think you did that things really really well there and that's one of my favorite techniques but yeah it was really really oh, well done and, and yeah so and, and because like the like for me when i do like abstract like much more abstract music and stuff i do struggle to rein it in like for me i am like one of these people that can i can only keep it sort of that that ambient foreboding thing for for like a small amount of time before i'm just like ah, you know everything in the kitchen sink kind of thing but i guess that's the sort of punk in me um no, I, I definitely appreciate that. And there's definitely a place for that. It's just, uh, um, and you do that really well with like the Christ word stuff. It's the, uh, so I was just like going back to some of the older songs you had sent me. You sent, it's like, uh, 
death waltz i don't know if the name has changed since then yeah yeah but it's just the dynamics and that where it is like what you just said where it's all over the place and then there is just these where it just goes down to like the slow you know slow tempo drum beat and just a bass line and it's like that shit is just like that's where it's at but yeah keeping the dynamics um i don't really play um the exception of vocals and like messing around with like sounds and noise mm-hmm. and stuff i don't really play too many uh, like instruments or anything did you, so did you grow up playing the guitar or um i had one but it was like a uh you know at a young age finally like pulling on the parents pant legs like i want a guitar and they're like no you don't no and <laughs> maybe they just didn't want to hear it but uh like finally you know at some point in like early high school i was able to talk him into getting me one for christmas and it was like you know the cheapest possible media play like paul stanley like kiss edition guitar oh, nice. like, you know <laughs> it's like whoa wow this is awesome and uh yeah i don't I, it it just didn't really uh once i started getting in bands and doing vocals mm-hmm. i kind then, of yeah. fell out it's like everyone else is better than you already so you're like yeah oh, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah so it was just like yeah i'll put this down and Anytime I would like show one of the bandmates, it's like, hey, I wrote this thing, and they would, I'd hand them the guitar, and, and then they would, yeah, they would, <laughs> they would play the shit, they would play the shit out of it, and like make it even better to the point where it wasn't the same thing I played. And it was yeah, just like, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, I'm not worthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I, like that's how I ended up on uh, on bass. Um, so yeah, no, I know, I know the, I know the feeling. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's also now. Uh, one of my friends that I used to be in a band with, we started like trying to write music again and stuff. And he was like, oh, I want to do, uh, he was really wanting to do something like Svalbard. And um, and I like, and I fucking love Svalbard, right? But I was like, I don't want to do something like that because I don't feel like I could actually do like a better job than Svalbard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I, like to me, like the, anything that I do, down that avenue will just be like like not as good and therefore like I don't want to bother doing it and 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 I feel and then like I've been thinking about that a lot recently and I was like you know what I've kind of like almost backed myself into like a weird corner now where like musically I feel like Christworks like so so represents me as like a really like not not like uh to the point where I've got it 100% but I really feel like I've, I've like uh really like tapped into the the way that i want it to sound you know like it is really getting towards that and now i feel like uh, you know i'm and i don't feel like doing any other sort of type of thing is going to be worth it to me because i'm not i i feel like it'll be like disingenuous somehow you know no i completely agree and uh it's funny because you would, uh, even a couple months ago, you would send me different mixes. It's like, I had to change some things. It sounded too much like a band. Yeah. Like it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Um, but I feel like that's just like, you know, going back to like the, the artist thing, I feel like it's important to constantly be changing. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't really feel like, like you said earlier, it's like, I feel like um, I'm definitely aware that I have like an aesthetic, I have a style. Yeah. But I don't feel that it's going to be that forever it's yeah like i feel like it's constantly changing especially now going more into the uh the video realm of things it's definitely going to kind of evolve and change and it's even like the photography i do it's not the same as when i first started doing yeah it i mean even since, since i've known you you I, i've there like since i've known you which isn't really that long like maybe six months or whatever like i feel there was like um or at least from what you know because obviously like I've not seen every single piece that you've done, you know, like obviously the internet only shows me certain things, but like when, when I first met you, it was like a certain way. And then there was this sort of tipping point where you start using like completely new techniques. And I was like, Oh fuck. So he's doing this kind of like, like, uh, this, like, so before your stuff was very like crisp and then now you suddenly started using this, like, um, like the longer the exposure yeah 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 exactly and everything and um hey give up. two dogs are fighting um and and but then also but then then just recently very recently you started doing that thing where you're like cutting things out you know like and having that like you know like you're cutting shapes out and then having like a white background 
so it's like yeah so you're kind of almost taking like the opposite stance where you're like no i'm gonna have these like really hard like graphic angles and, and stuff right yeah it's uh it, it it's uh I like to say that a lot of it's intentional, but it's always a happy accident at first. Yeah. Um, it's just like, oh, well, that actually looks cool. I'm going to pursue this. Yeah. And then I just kind of, when I'm guilty of like, when I find something new or a new technique or something, I kind of like try to apply it to everything. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's too Everyone's much. Or, yeah. But it's a, um, um, the long exposure stuff was like, when I first started doing like my own photography, I was doing that. But then I quickly realized it's like, well, maybe I should try to learn a little bit more about photography and actually getting stuff in focus and mm. before I go down that road. But I don't lately it's like it seems to be like I want to shoot more of that, the longer exposure stuff, just because it, it has this kind of uh more movement. It has mm. this kind of like action to it and drama to it that this you know, the static image doesn't necessarily have. Um it's a very different atmosphere. Right. Uh, yeah, which is what's interesting because it's like you can still tell the characters themselves are, are made by you, but the uh, the sense of space and stuff is very very different. Like the, the there's like an aura around the the figure that uh, it wasn't that it wasn't there before, but it was different. Right, and that's probably what you're talking about. Like your your stuff is going to change as time goes on. Right, and a lot of it is. Um a lot of the figurative stuff is shot at home and they uh like i just hang like a simple backdrop on the wall and then i use that to shoot and that's kind of like how it became to these kind of like these isolating like really black backgrounds and mm -hmm. i kind of like the background even if it is just like a flat color whether it's the white or the primarily black it, it's like a part of the piece and it does most of the work it has mm -hmm. that kind of that isolating like huge kind of yeah, um, like the bass yeah, the vastness of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah like, I, I, do you know um, anything about Lovecraft? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, Azathoth, uh, the the sort of gigantic being at the center of the universe. I get them. Uh, I get them mixed up. Like I, I'm, you know, fully aware of like which one. But as far oh, as like, yeah, which yeah. one's so, like, which, and which one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Azathoth is the the one that's just eyes and teeth and tentacles at the center of the universe. And I'm like, okay, I yeah. was looking at your stuff yesterday. And I was, it was, I always like, um, yeah, like I, I had this, they have this feeling of like, I always like, I don't know, there's something about Azathoth that I'm just so obsessed with that. The notion is like, he, like, he's like the, the sort of basically like the ultimate God of the universe. And he, um, and he's just floating at the very center of the universe, just like, you know, like uh, infathomably giant and just constantly mutating and, and, um, and your characters have the same, uh, atmosphere to me that that does is just this like kind of like well the recent stuff anyway it has this like this like there are these mutating beings and this like vast emptiness you know um yeah the yeah, sort that's... of like form you know like you know like a, a lovecraft always say formless being you know yeah it's always really interesting um i've always like like that where it's just like no words like human tongue can't pronounce it or you know can't yeah. describe it really um and i feel like um that's kind of like why a lot of like Lovecraft work doesn't really translate to like movies and mm. things like that, just because of that. Yeah, it's imagination um, based. Yeah, he leaves it up to you, and it's just kind of um, like any time that you, at least in in my opinion, any time that you you're left to kind of imagine what something looks like, whether it's like you're reading it out of a book and you have to interpret and make it up in your head what it looks like, it's almost impossible to kind of make that better than what you've came up with in your head it's better yeah. you know it's like you see a movie of it and it's like nah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. not that you know um but no that's kind of you to say um huge fan of like the lovecraft lore it's the the fact that like he's always done like like even now he's gone that like all these people kind of like add on to his mythos and stuff mm. it's just like like he's only kind of like Cthulhu, for example, was only in like one story, two stories yeah. maybe of him, and it's just kind of like everybody's kind of mm. done their interpretation of it, yeah. made it in this thing, and I think that's super interesting and cool. Yeah, I, I feel um, like the Cthulhu thing is kind of weird because it, I I feel like Cthulhu wasn't even necessarily like the best story he did. It was more like it was just such an, it was like 
uh it's like the kind of kind of one where you go like uh oh you've not read any lovecraft okay well if you want to get like a feeling of what all his stuff is like then just read cthulhu and then you'll know whether you should read more of it do you know what i mean like right um i actually like uh, i was a huge fan of it but it was like um like reading the one story and then like reading other stories at a young age but it wasn't like I didn't realize that they weren't Lovecraft stories. They were like the fan fiction, you know, when I was younger and like All right. the ones that like other people add on to it and stuff. Yeah. And honestly, like some of the best like Cthulhu stories are the ones that other really authors kind of wrote. Um, yeah, I've never read anything like that. Like I've never read um, any. I, I, I don't know if I would have sought it out if I didn't know. It was just kind yeah. of like a happy accident, you know, where I yeah. just kind of fell into it. But, but yeah, it's uh, all that stuff. It was more like not even just uh Lovecraft aside, just even like the giant kind of like monster st- stuff from like childhood. Like I grew up on Godzilla and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and uh, I still get excited when a movie comes on or there's a new movie coming out in those regards. And uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, like um, have you seen uh, Mandy? What is it? Mandy, you know the Nicolas Cage film. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like I, I was uh, like that was like. Like, I don't watch, I don't, like, it's weird because a lot of my clients, or, like, I don't know, probably nearly all my clients are big horror people, um, and they always assume that I'm really into horror as well, which, like, you know, obviously you would assume that, but, like, really, I'm totally not, um, not that I'm, like, well, I, I'm, I'm really, really not into, like, sadistic horror stuff, because, like, I'm just, like, a very, like, sensitive person, and, like, really sadistic shit like just upsets me right but then like i do really like like house of a thousand corpses and shit like that but i um i'm just much more into documentaries uh so that's mostly what i watch so like um i like when i saw mandy i was just like completely like oh my god this is like what i've been like wishing for like this whole time you know Uh, especially with the whole like sort of heavy you know the like 80s heavy metal kind of aesthetic of it and everything but I, I i watched an interview with the director of it and he what he said was just like so like it like made me so like happy and excited to hear that uh that like this is how like what he was trying to do so like he said um you know when he was young and growing up and he's like you're you're like the early 30s right right yeah so like he was this, he's the same age as us basically and he um used to go to the you know the video store with his mum when he was growing up and I, I imagine you did as well and you'd go and look at all the you know in the horror section and at that time it would be like all the sort of like early 90s late 80s horror films that would be like lining in with all the really colorful um old-fashioned style uh you know covers right and yeah and you'd pick you'd pick a movie without even knowing about it just yeah yeah but, the cover but, like oh this like, looks awesome yeah 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 exactly but like the same as me like my mom would never ever let me watch that stuff right so like like i used to just sit and just stare at this artwork and just like imagine what the movie would be like and because that's the other thing is that you know what you imagined and then you watched it and it was never yeah like you were saying earlier it never matches up you know and so what he said with Mandy, what he was trying to do was make the film that his childhood mind was uh, was imagining, you know, and now using modern technology and like, you know, the, the, you know, the level of direction that we're at now, we're in like the renaissance of filmmaking practically. Right. Yeah. No, and, it's, and just, uh, yeah. I actually really enjoyed, that was one of those movies, like when I saw the trailer, it was like, I want this movie to be yeah, awesome. Yeah, like, yeah, was. yeah. Yeah. Um, there was some some friends of mine were kind of disappointed that it was just like a revenge movie, but I was like, I don't think that it's just a revenge movie. No. Even if it is, I think like Tales of Revenge are kind of like, there's some of the most like, some of the best stories told. I don't yeah. know why it's like revenge I, I think is also such when a it, good motivator. Yeah, when it's so visually and odd uh, and uh, audibly stimulating, if you have any deeper level of plot to it than that, it's just like it's way too much. You know, right. Like, uh, that that was the main thing that I thought I was like it had to be if it looks and sounds the way it de- did and is so fucking like versicral and really drags you into it and really like whether you want to or not it makes you feel things when you watch it like you can add like deeper levels of plot to it and stuff because you you just couldn't handle it you know or and and furthermore it would start to retract from from how awesome it is visually 
Um, yeah, it's on the surface, it seems like such a like complex movie, but it's like when you look down, it's like yeah, it's really not, and that's like not downplaying it in or anything. I actually no. like it. like I like that movie a lot. Um, have you seen the other one uh, that he made, uh, the director uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow? No, I've still not seen that. Yeah, yeah, it's, I would it's very it. different to Mandu, though, isn't it? It's not like a, it's like it's like a kind of, I, from what I've read, it's it's like. Um, it's really fucked up and weird, but it's not got this kind of like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it doesn't have any fucking like uh, stainless steel scythes in it or anything, you know? It, it does, but it's like not as, uh, it's not as tangible of a storyline as like Mandy is. Mm. It's more like, um, um, without going too much into it, the reason to bring it up is like, that's a movie that doesn't really have a lot of dialogue. It's just kind yeah. of like a lot. It's a lot of, it's a really slow movie, but it's just very visually, like visually appealing. And again, it goes back to that kind of like that eighties nostalgia, mm. but it's, um, it, it's one of those movies where, um, you can't, um, I imagine it was more storyboarding over script. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, I watched a good documentary about like the making of that, uh, the Mad Max Fury Road. And they were talking yeah. about that where it's just like, you know, there's no way to just kind of have all these ideas when you're making the movie on a script. And it's like, you got to kind of like do storyboards to kind of tell the story and it's like, yeah. more visual storytelling. And I, I, I think like, I like Mandy a lot, but beyond the black rainbow kind of goes into that more where it's really, I feel like there's less rules. There's less, um, it's, it's just, almost as if like he had these ideas that he wanted to kind of like concrete to film and put them in there and have yeah, like, like, a story hey, around how, it. How do I justify having, wanting to film these individual things? Right. I mean, that's, I think that's also like for you, it seems like that could be, you know, like the kind of end game for what you've started to do is that it seems like you, you have these like visions in your head of things that you want to portray. And now if you're starting to then like film things, then, you know, if you have these, like, collection of, of different ideas, of, like, visual ideas, then, you know, eventually I, you'll get to a point where you're like, well, like, I could release something that has all these ideas. I just need to, to find out this, because, this. like, it's all, I also, also feel like if my brain is coming up with these things, there must be some sort of reason why my brain is doing it, and there must be some sort of narrative that, like, my conscious mind just hasn't begun to understand yet, you know, and, and it's like, it's like a kind of self, um, uh, it's like a, yeah, journey of self discovery to find out what the narrative actually is and make it reveal itself. And then you then reveal it to everyone else. Right. And it's a, it's a, um, um, not to sound all like David Lynch about it, but it's yeah. like, like, as beautiful as like language is, it kind of takes away from things, especially mm -hmm. in the visual realm. And I've always been a more visual person. Um, even when like writing lyrics, it's always been, it's like I intentionally try to keep it very cryptic and kind of like over the top surreal. And it's like, what, what does that mean? It's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know like when, I, when you sent me the lyrics for our track together, it was they were such a, a stark contact uh, contrast to what mine are because mine are very real and like uh, very like personal uh, and 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 yours are like so the opposite of that like not oh, no, they're not definitely personal, uh, it, def yeah. it definitely comes from like a real personal place it's just yeah um, yeah, yeah but it's just their 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 mode of of communicating that is just so different from mine it was right. such a stark contrast. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do it, even if it is. But the, uh, um, it's, it's always, uh, it's always difficult when somebody's like, "What is this?" It's not just like a song or lyrics, but even like a piece of art or something you've made. It's like, what's this about? It, it's almost. Uh, I, I kind of stopped rolling my eyes at the question, but it's kind of like, it, it's especially with like lyrics. It's like, what is this about? It's um, the best way I could put it into words. I've already done. And for me to do it any differently than that would discredit everything that I've, you know, the song itself and I've done. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, again, it, it's 
like you said earlier, it's just kind of, it has to be genuine. And for me to do it any differently would be disingenuine, you know? Mm. So, but it's, uh, I've definitely been in bands and tried out for bands in the past where the, you know, the lyrics weren't what they wanted. And it was like, you know, cool. I appreciate you being upfront about it, but it was like, I've not really, anytime I've tried to basically cater what a thing is about or do something like that, it's never really worked out in my favor. So it's just best. No, to just kind yeah. Of, yeah. Totally. I, I feel like, um, and I was thinking about that, like, again, with, with the guy um, that I was speaking about earlier that we were, I used to be in a band with, and we used to talk a lot about, you know, like, oh, but people like this and like, you know, like uh, people don't like this and everything. And, and it was only when I, when I started and I got to the point when I got a bit older and then I was like, you know what, fuck this. I'm just going to make the band that I want to hear and I'm just going to like really, really just try and like deeply tap into like what, what it is that's coming out of me. And that was when uh, when people actually start to really resonate with it because I think it's not like, I don't really think people have a particular thing that they want to hear. It's more like that if you if they can really feel what you were feeling when, when you made it, then that's what people are drawn to is, is, is this like uh, sincerity, you know, regardless of what style it is or whatever. You know? Right. Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, it sounds cliche to say, but like the whole idea of like, you know, it's gotta be for you. And if you like it, other people will like it. It's yeah. Just, you know, it, I find myself doing it anyway, so it's, mm. you know, it's, I do like it. It's got to be yeah. something that I like, and then if other people like it, cool. Yeah. Um, and it definitely gives you an audience to kind of put it in front of. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. What 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 do you think um, with your, what is, what is the kind of atmosphere that you're, do you have, like, a, a sort of, I mean, you've been doing it for long enough now that I'm assuming that you must have some sort of idea of what it is you're trying to get across, or or what what is it um i do but i'm still trying to figure out how to put that into words yeah 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 yeah, um, yeah. but there is definitely a meaning it's not just like pretty pictures and stuff but it it, it does well, kind definitely of, not pretty so <laughs> yeah well it, it's a. Uh, it just kind of depends um it's yeah, I, 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 to be honest, I just, I guess I'm just trying to figure out how to put in your words, but there is definitely, there is definitely a method to the madness, though. Mm. Yeah. Awesome, man. Cool. Well, that's us being chatting for like about an hour. So, um, oh, yeah. Cool. cool, man. Yeah, that was uh, really, really awesome to talk to you. And uh, yeah, I look forward to us. Uh, I started uh, drawing our uh, collaboration this morning. So, cool. Yeah, I look yeah. forward to seeing it. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, your figure and then there's like a a kind of wolf like it's like a kind of like a japanese dragon kind of spinning around it but it's like a wolf rather than a drag like a reptile so yeah fuck yeah cool i yeah. like your wolf your uh, your wolves are pretty cool so i'm excited yeah. to see what you do yeah th same man thank you very much right i'll yeah. uh, see you again soon bro yeah thank you jamie cheers see you later cool. Peace.